Number 30. A resistor made of nichrome wire is used in an application where its resistance cannot change more than 1% from its value at 20 degrees Celsius. Over what temperature range can it be used? All right. So first thing is note that, uh, so first take a look at number uh, 29. I explained this concept uh, in detail there. So I'm going to kind of run through it a little bit here. Um, so remember that as the temperature changes of a particular material, the resistance uh, to current flow also changes, all right? It increases, basically. It's a basic linear relationship. Um, so that being said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the information in the problem and start listing out my variables, all right? So uh, what I note is that uh, they tell us uh, we're dealing with nichrome, right? So we already know that we're going to need the alpha value uh, for nichrome. Why do we know that? Well, again, check out number 29. I went through that uh, discussion. So nichrome's alpha value is going to be 0.4 times 10 to the minus 3. Okay, the next thing is, I realize that they're, uh, they're saying that things are changing by percentages. Now that's fine. But what I want to do is I know that I'm dealing with initials and finals in this problem. So let me first um, write down the initial temperature. It sounds like they tell that to me, right? It b For the most part, all right? Uh, why don't I say that the initial temperature <clears throat> is going to be uh, 20 degrees Celsius, okay? So 20 degrees Celsius, I'm going to write that down. 20, 20 degrees Celsius is the initial. What's the final temperature? Well, we don't know. So let's put a little question mark there. Okay. Now, what's the initial resistance? Do you know what it is? No, it doesn't tell us. So again, check out number 29. I went through it in a discussion of how to think about this. So I'm just going to write this down as the initial resistance. I don't know what it is. But what I do know then is the relationship between the initial and the final resistance. So for example, right, pretend the initial resistance, I'm going to use a real number here for a second, pretend the initial resistance is, you know, 100. And then it says that the, uh, the resistance here cannot change more than 1%. So if you started with a value of 100, and I told you that it cannot change by more than 1%, what are the possible values of your final resistance? Right? I mean, the possible values of the final resistance here would be something like, well, it, it, you might say, well, doesn't it depend if it increases or decreases? And that would be a valid point, right? If it were to increase by 1% of the 100, then it would become 101, right? Because 1% of 100 is 1, right? So it'd be 101. If it were to decrease then by 1% of 100, then it would become 99, right? So... If I don't, now you can use these numbers actually in your calculation because they're going to work out proportionally uh, the same. So what I'm going to do though here is instead of using those numbers like that, I'm going to now plug in this. So I'm going to say that the final uh, resistance here cannot change by more than 1.1, meaning that it, excuse me, 1.01. So meaning that I'm going to take 1.01 and I'm going to multiply it then by my initial resistance value. Now remember, if this was 100, what, and I plug in 100 here, what's 100 times, you know, 1.01? It's 101, okay, what I was saying before. So hopefully that kind of makes sense a little bit, all right? Now, all I need to do is basically plug everything in. And I'm going to try and find my final temperature, okay? No, it doesn't ask for that specifically. It says over what range, but let's just find this. This is if it were to increase by 1%, basically, right? Okay, so let's just do it quickly. So we got RF is equal to RI times one plus alpha times the change in temperature, but you know now from watching number 29 that it's just the final minus the initial, all right? And what I'm going to now plug in is the things that I know. So we got RI is gonna be, uh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, sorry. 1.01 RI is gonna be equal to RI. I'm just plugging in the values times n1 plus my alpha now for nichrome, and we said that that was 0 0.4 times 10 to the minus 3, times then, and let me move this over just a tad. Then the final temperature, I don't know what it is, minus the initial, which was 20. Okay, great. So I'm going to divide out the ri. I explained that also in number tw uh, 29. So notice how they're going to cancel beautifully, so that's how uh, you know I know they're going to cancel. So uh, now I'm just going to distribute this value. So we're going to have 0 0.4 times 10 to the minus 3. 
I went through the math a lot slower in that problem. It's the same exact math, okay? So point, well, in terms of form, not in terms of actual numbers, but 0.4 times 10 to the minus three, multiplied by 20. Don't forget it's gonna be negative. So we're gonna get a value of negative 0.008. All right, combine your like terms here. So we got 1.01 .01 is gonna be equal to 0 0.4 times 10 to the minus three times the final temperature. And then plus that subtraction, so what is this, 0.992 or something? Let me just double check with the calculator, it's a little early, so, okay, good. So now, simply subtract this value on over, okay, minus 0 0.992, so subtract that on over. So we're going to 1.01 .01 minus then that value, so we get 0 point, oops, how did that turn into a square? Uh, sure, 0 0.018 is equal to then 0 0.4 times 10 to the minus three TF. And all we're gonna do, lo and behold, is then divide this on out. Great, that goes bye-bye. And my final temperature here will be 0 0.08, excuse me, 0 0.018. See, that's how you can make a simple mistake. All right, divide by that value. And the final temperature here would be 45. All right, 45 degrees Celsius. All right, cool. Now that's not necessarily the answer. Just know that it can go up to the upper bound, right? If it's at 20, so look at the upper left-hand corner of the page here. It started at 20, right? And it's allowed to go to 1% increase would have been uh, 45, right? 45 degrees Celsius. So it's allowed to go up to 45. But what about if we were to go the other way? If we were to, if it were to cool, right? Because it just says, cannot change by more than 1% from its value. Hmm. It doesn't say increase or decrease, so I gotta look at both, right? So now what I need to do is basically repeat the calculation, all right? The only thing that's going to change here is this factor, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write it in blue now. So remember, the other example was if this was 100 and I decrease this by 1% of its initial value, it all percents are always relative to some value that you're starting with. So if I'm saying it's decreasing by 1%, the question is, well, 1% of what? Okay, anytime you hear percent, you gotta think that, all right? Um, I see time and time again, percents confuse a lot of people and myself as well initially because it, it I was I never, kind of like understood percents are always relative to some value so anytime you hear a percent of any sort percent of what okay so and you got to say it like that by the way percent of what okay it's the only way you're going to learn it so if i start with 100 and i'm going to decrease it by one percent of its initial value meaning one percent of this remember we said was one more or less and i'm going to subtract it so therefore i'm going to get a 99 okay so in other words then my factor here is going to change to 0.99. So notice how I'm just taking one and I'm adding my percentage to it to have to get to the initial value that I use, not the initial like, uh, you know, just what I'm saying is the value I use first. And then I'm basically taking one and I'm subtracting then this same percentage to get them the 0.99. Okay. So I'm going to repeat the calculation. I don't think I'm going to write it all out, but literally it's the same exact thing. The only thing that's going to change here is Instead of this value here, it's gonna be 0.99. Instead of this value here, it's gonna be 0.99. Instead of this value here, it's gonna be 0.99. So I notice now I have a little change, right? So it's gonna be 0 0.99, then minus 0 0.992. And we should realize that it's now going to be a negative number. Cool, that's fine, okay? because you can have negative temperatures, right? Assuming you're talking about Celsius, that is, if you're doing this in Kelvin, uh, better not have a negative temperature, okay? So in any case, um, so the change here now is not positive 0.018, it is now negative 0.002. All right, so all I'm gonna do is then divide that now by the 0.4 times 10 to the minus three, and I get my new temperature of negative five. So the final temperature here, if it decreased by 1%, was gonna be five, excuse me, negative five degrees Celsius. I'm not really caring about sig figs right now. It's just, it's five. Whether it's 5.0, 5.00, whatevs, right? So it went to now negative five. So if it were to decrease by 1%, it can go down to negative five degrees Celsius. 
If it were to increase by 1%, it can go up to 45 degrees Celsius. So my question is then, if it's allowed to start at 20 degrees Celsius and you're allowed then a 1% change from its initial value in either direction, over what temperature range can it be used? Well, the temperature range that can be used, as long as the temperature in your environment goes from negative 5 degrees Celsius to and from 45 degrees Celsius, you're good. You're good. Okay. If you then had to find, so th that's the range. That's how I would answer the question. Whether they want it in terms of the actual temperatures here, or they want it in terms of the change in temperature overall from the lower bound to the upper bound, by all means, right? By all means, you can calculate that. So it can change by a value, total value of 50, all right, 50 degrees, right? Because it went from negative 5 to 45. That's the range. That's the entire temperature range, 50. But they might not want that. <laughs> they might want the range based off of 20. So if you notice, there's a nice little symmetry here, right? How much can it change? How much can it increase from 20? Well, it can go up by 25 degrees Celsius, right? How much can it go down? From 20? Oh, it can go down by negative 25 degrees Celsius. So another way to answer the question would be, it can change by 25 degrees Celsius from initial. You know, so, and this would be uh, 50 degrees Celsius over entire range. All right, I'm scribbling because, you know, it is whatever. And then here, here, right, that, that this would be the, exact identical, you know, this would be the exact temperature range. I have no idea, right? How to answer the question. They're all valid. Totally depends. So, um, hopefully that makes sense. Guys, thank you very much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Please remember to help us out and subscribe if this helped at all. We'd so much appreciate it. Take care.